Listening test two. Part one a. In this part, you will hear ten short conversations. Each conversation will be followed by one question. For each question, you will have ten seconds to choose the best answer and mark your answer on your answer sheet. The conversations and questions will be played only once. Now let's begin. Number one. Hi, Susan. Did you hear about the dorms being closed this summer? Yes, I did. I'm rather upset because I need to take summer classes. Me too. I wanted to take Chinese, but I can't if I have to go all the way home. What do you think we should do? Maybe we should talk to the professors and see if they could help us. That's a good idea. Perhaps they can get us permission to stay at the dorm. Let's talk to each of our professors together to make a bigger impact. Good idea. Question: What will the students ask the professors to do for them? Number two. Hello, Jessica. Could you give me some advice? Sure, Mike. My professor asked me to participate in a conference where I could learn how to organize volunteer teams that support victims in disaster-stricken areas. I want to go, but I've already said yes to another volunteer job. Well, it sounds like you could learn a lot from the conference. Yes, that's true. You can apply what you learn to future volunteer work and then share your knowledge with other volunteers. That's a really good point. I think you should go to the conference. Thanks a lot. Question: What is Mike concerned about? Number three. Hi, Mrs. Smith. Do you have a minute? Sure, Bill. What can I do for you? I don't know what I can do about my grades. I study hard, but I'm not doing well on the exams. I've noticed that you take a lot of notes. Maybe that's your problem. What do you mean? There's no need to write down everything I say. You are studying more information than you need for the exam. Just write down the most important points. Don't we need to read the textbook too? Yes, but you should highlight the most important parts of the text for easy review. I see. I'd also suggest taking thirty minutes to review what you've written down and highlighted after each class. Question: According to Mrs. Smith, what is wrong with Bill's study habits? Number four. Thanks for letting me ask you some questions today, Mr. Benson. No problem. How has the growth of the city affected your business? In the beginning, our customer base expanded. But things got tough last year when a large chain opened up down the street. I imagine that hurt quite a few local businesses. It did, but using the internet has helped a lot. Business is improving now that we can sell our products online to people all over the country. That's good to hear. Question: What was the initial impact of the expansion of the city on Mr. Benson's business? Number five. Excuse me, professor. Can I talk to you about my research paper? Sure. I want to write about comparative literature. Great. What is your thesis? Well, I want to discuss Vietnamese and Chinese literature. What sort of points should I pay attention to? You'll find the most similarities if you go far back into history, since Vietnam has been influenced by other countries in more recent years. I see. Also, it may be a good idea to focus more on religious writings. Question: What advice does the professor give to the student? Number six. Excuse me. My name is Jordan Ellis, and I'm interested in working as a teaching assistant. I see. Have you taken the two introduction to teaching courses? 
Well, I took the first one last semester, and I'm planning to take the second one next year. Usually, teaching assistants need to have taken both courses before they apply, so I recommend that you do that first. I see. Are there any other requirements? Yes, you also need to get a written recommendation from your advisor. Actually, there aren't any vacant positions at the moment, but if you'd like to give me your contact information, I can let you know about any future vacancies. That would be great. Thank you very much. Question. What two things do students usually need to do before they can become a teaching assistant? Number seven. Hi, Nadia. Did you hear about the cafeteria closing on Saturday mornings from next month? Yeah, I think it's a terrible idea. They said that only a few students regularly use it, but there are actually lots of students on campus during the weekends. There aren't any other affordable places to eat nearby. Well, that's true. But did you hear that a new cafe just outside of campus will be opening next week? Oh, really? I didn't know that. What kind of food will they serve? I'm not sure, but I think it'll be similar to the cafeteria and for a similar price. I see. Sounds like it could be a good replacement for the cafeteria. Then I'll have to check it out once it opens. Question: Why is Nadia upset about the school cafeteria closing on Saturday mornings? Number eight. Excuse me, Ms. Carson. Could I get your advice on something? Sure, Tim. How can I help? Well, I'm hoping to be chosen to study in England next year, but I need to submit a research proposal along with my study abroad application. I see. What's your field of interest? Well, since I'm a political science major, I'd like to do some in-depth research on British politics while I'm in England. That sounds interesting. I can help you develop your proposal, so you have a good chance of being selected if you'd like. That would be great. Thank you very much. Okay. Bring your draft proposal to my office next Monday, and we'll talk about what to do next. Question: What will Ms. Carson do to help Tim? Number nine. Hey, Ellen, what do you think we should do about the school newspaper? The editor said we're really low on funds at the moment. I know, James. If it keeps going like this, we might have to stop production. That would be a real shame. It's really popular with the students. Well, what about asking local businesses if they would be interested in advertising in the paper? That's a good idea. I'm sure there'd be some businesses that would like to market to students. I'll start looking into it and let you know how I get on. Question: What is the problem with the school newspaper? Number ten. Hi, Professor Chalmers. Do you have a moment? Sure, Marcus. How can I help you? Well, I've written a short story. And I'd really appreciate it if I could get your feedback on it. I'm hoping to get it published in a literary magazine. That's great. I'd be happy to take a look at it. I'm a friend of the editor of Creative Writing Monthly. Would you like me to send her your work? That would be wonderful. But I'd like to hear what you think of my story first before it gets submitted. I see. I'll look it over and let you know what I think. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Marcus. Question: What does Marcus want Professor Chalmers to do? Part One B. In this part, you will hear ten short passages. Each passage will be followed by one question. For each question, you will have ten seconds to choose the best answer. And mark your answer on your answer sheet. The passages and questions will be played only once. 
Now, let's begin. Number 11. Our university library was established about 100 years ago by a man named Joe Garcia, who was a close friend of the university's founder. As a writer and poet, Mr. Garcia wanted to give students who couldn't afford to buy school books a chance to study as much as they wanted. He especially cared about supporting students who had jobs. In the basement of the library, students can find important letters and notes written by the library founder in those days. Question. What was the purpose of the library? Number 12. In the 1970s, several countries began using nuclear energy. Many people agree that the disadvantages of nuclear energy outweigh the advantages. Nuclear energy creates waste that is extremely toxic. The most toxic nuclear waste takes around 40 years to be touchable again. There are also safety concerns. If a nuclear reactor leaks or breaks down, the nearby air and water will become toxic, causing many of the living things in the area to die. Question. What does the speaker imply about nuclear energy? Number 13. Penang Island, which is called the Pearl of the Orient, is one of the biggest tourist areas in Malaysia. Tourists are attracted by the high-class beach resorts in the north, like Batu Feringi, and Telak Bahang, and by Georgetown, which recently became a World Heritage Site. Many Japanese tourists can be seen in the area. The island is home to many retired Westerners and Japanese who are living their final years in paradise. Many people also live in summer vacation homes during the winter. Question. What is true about Penang Island? Number 14. The IT company ABC Tech, located down the street from Stonewall University, is hiring students to intern there during the summer. Students who are interested in this great opportunity need to hand their resumes into the ABC Tech office by 6pm on May 2nd. Please also include a short cover letter that includes your summer class schedule. For more information about this intern program, please visit ABC Tech's website at www.abctech.com. Question. What should students who want to intern at ABC Tech do? Number 15. New research has found that caffeine and tea may be good for your health. Drinking caffeinated tea as often as every day could help fight many common diseases. Caffeine can help protect your nervous system, which means that you will be less likely to get diseases like MS. Also, the antioxidants in green tea, for example, help to prevent cancer. Many teas also have other natural chemicals in them that can fight off cancer, heart attacks, and diabetes. Question. What is the speaker trying to tell us? Number 16. The tabula rasa theory says the way we're raised determines the kind of adults we will become. However, after comparing groups of brothers and sisters, modern psychologists began to almost completely disagree with the theory. Brothers and sisters from the same parents act the same at a young age, but they grow to be different from each other later in life. This means that people's personalities can change, despite their upbringing. Question. What is implied about human personality by the speaker?
Number 17. Rogers University is now offering an online English delivery service to students learning English as a second language. Students who are interested in getting their English writing checked by native speakers can do so by email. The native checkers include people such as university teachers, journalists and editors. All checked writing will be returned to students within 48 hours. If you have any questions about the service, please contact Marcel Morita in the School Affairs Department. Question. What should students first do to get their English writing checked? Number 18. Welcome to Science 203. I am your professor, Laura Boyd. The title of the book you need for this class is written on the board. It's for sale at all university bookstores. You'll have a reading assignment for every class. All assigned readings must be done in advance. If you forget, it'll be difficult to understand my lectures and you'll have to take a lot of notes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me after class. Question. What should students do in order to do well in the class? Number 19. We'll continue our discussion about planets today, starting with Jupiter. Jupiter has many bright spots and lines of color. The dark and light red lines that we see are caused by warm air rising and cool air falling. Gases rise with the warm air creating the lighter colors, and the cool air falls to create the dark colors. Because of Jupiter's fast rotation, and because it doesn't have any land masses like Earth, a large hurricane called the Great Red Spot seems to have been there for hundreds of years. Question. What is the Great Red Spot? Number 20. The university's theater museum has been under construction for the past two months, but it's almost finished. The rebuilt museum will open at the beginning of next month on Thursday, June 2nd. It will house many important documents written by a prominent dramatist who studied at the university. A ceremony will be held when the museum opens on June 2nd. We hope all students will celebrate the opening of this new addition to the campus on this day. Question. What is true about the museum? Part 1C. In this part, you will hear five short passages. Each passage will be followed by one question. For each question, you will see four graphs or charts in your test booklet. You will have 10 seconds to choose the best graph or chart to answer the question. Mark your answer on your answer sheet. The passages and questions will be played only once. Now, let's begin. Number 21. It appears that in recent years progress has been made on the division of labor between couples. According to surveys, married men are now spending more time on housework compared to 2005. In particular, the time spent on cleaning has almost doubled. Time spent on laundry has also greatly increased by 10 minutes compared to 2005. On the other hand, the amount of time spent on cooking has only increased slightly. Question. Which graph best matches the description given? Number 22. It is said that there is a close relationship between temperature and beer sales. As an example, let's look at beer sales at a certain supermarket and the daily high temperature. On August 13th last year, the high temperature was 25 degrees and beer sales were fairly good. The next day, the temperature fell by 2 degrees 
and beer sales also decreased from the previous day. But on the 15th, almost 80 bottles of beer were sold, and the high temperature was close to 30 degrees. Question. Which graph best matches the description given? Number 23. In today's agricultural science class, we will look at the food self-sufficiency rate for six European countries. There are large differences between each country. The countries with the highest figures are France and Germany, and France in particular is exceeding its self-sufficiency rate by over 100%. The UK's rate is in the middle of the range, which is almost equal to Sweden's rate. Out of these six countries, Switzerland and Italy are ranked at the bottom. Question. Which graph best matches the description given? Number 24. Welcome to the 12 week intensive English class. Let me explain the schedule. First, there will be a basic lecture where you can learn basic language skills. Then you will split into two groups for speaking and writing classes. But before that, you will take an exam that will be used to divide you into groups. After each class has ended, the groups will come together for a discussion class. Question Which chart? best matches the description given. Number 25. There are 260 students in the Faculty of Education at Waterton University, which amounts to 15% of the total number of students. The Faculty of Education is divided into four majors. The number of students majoring in educational psychology is 143, which is more than half of the students in the faculty. Educational sociology is also popular, with 23% of the students, followed by educational philosophy. Educational administration has the least students, just 7%. Question. Which chart best matches the description given? Part 2A. In this part, you will hear three long conversations, A, B, and C. Before each conversation, you will hear a short description of the situation. The situation is also printed in your test booklet. Each conversation will be followed by three questions. The questions are also printed in your test booklet. For each question, you will have 10 seconds to choose the best answer and mark your answer on your answer sheet. The conversations and questions will be played only once. Now, let's begin. A. Situation. A student is talking with a tutor at the Student Support Center. Thank you for your time today. I was wondering if you had time to look at the essay draft I sent you. Yes, of course. If I'm not mistaken, you're applying for a one-year study abroad course in China. Is that right? Yes, exactly. The essay is part of the application that I need to submit. If it's good enough, I can get to the next round, which is an interview. Only five people can go to China, so I want to make sure that my essay is really good. I read your draft, and I didn't find any serious problems with the length and your wording. However, some parts seem too abstract to me, so I think it would be much better if you could make it more specific. Okay. Exactly what part do you think I need to work on? Your reason for studying abroad was a little weak, so you need to explain that in more detail. Why do you want to study abroad? I want to study Chinese, and I especially want to improve my speaking skills. I see. Is that related to your future career plans? Yes, I was fascinated by Chinese artifacts when I was in middle school. Since then, I've been interested in China, and someday I want to work at a trading company there. 
to make that dream come true, I'm hoping to improve my Chinese while I'm still in college. That's a great reason. Why don't you add what you just told me to your essay? That would make your reasons for applying much more specific. All right. I'll take your advice and revise my draft today. Why don't you email your draft to me once you've revised it? I'd like to take another look at it. I will. Thank you so much for all your help. I hope you succeed. Questions. Number 26. Why is the student writing an essay? Number 27. What does the tutor say about the student's essay? Number 28. What does the student want to do in the future? B. Situation. A student is talking with an advisor about her major. Oh, hi, Rissa. What brings you here today? Actually, I'm having a hard time deciding between two majors. I was wondering if you could give me some advice. I see. You need to decide your major by the end of your sophomore year, so you only have one more semester. What are the two majors you're considering? Psychology and environmental studies. They're both unique fields of study with their own challenges. What makes you want to major in them? Psychology is a well-established field, and there are a lot of things I can learn about the human mind. On the other hand, environmental studies has a short history, but it's going to be big in the future, and I think it has career potential. I'm very interested in both. Oh, I see. Um, it's a tough decision. Are you going to attend the school department fair next month? Yes, I'm planning to. At the fair, students in each department will talk about what got them interested in their majors and what they're studying. You can ask them for advice on how to choose a major. There will also be some graduates discussing work and job opportunities in their field. OK, I'll do that. Thank you very much. You could also observe a class in the department you want to study in. I'm sure it'll help a lot. I didn't know about that. How can I sign up? You just need to submit an application to each department, and you can observe up to three classes. You'll be able to learn a lot more about the majors if you take actual classes. All right, I'll do that. Thank you very much for all your help. You're welcome. You can come and talk to me anytime. Questions. Number 29. What does the student find attractive about environmental studies? Number 30. What will take place at the school department fair? Number 31. What does a student need to do to observe a class? C. Situation. Two students are talking with a professor in the university hallway about an event. Professor White, do you have a few minutes? We're wondering if you could take part in an event we're planning to hold next month. What kind of event is it? We have 10 new international students in our department this semester, and we want to make them feel welcomed and to help them get oriented. It would be great if you could join us and talk to the students about the classes and programmes our department offers. OK, that sounds like a wonderful plan. I'd love to take part. What else are you planning on doing at the event? The students will introduce themselves to each other and will give a tour around the campus. We're also going to prepare a light meal and we'll have time for students to talk freely and get to know each other. Is there anything else you think we should do? Well, studying in college is important for international students, but I think they also need help living away from home in a foreign country. Living abroad can be quite stressful, so 
it might be good to take some time to answer their questions about any problems they're facing in their daily lives. That's a great idea. We'll set aside some time for that. Has the day of the event been set? I'll need to make preparations. It'll be on the 14th of next month, starting at 5 o'clock, and it's going to be in the cafeteria. We expect the event to last about two hours. Okay. I hope a lot of people can attend. By the end of this week, we'll send out an email to all the students in our department and invite them to come. We want as many people there as possible. Let me know if you need anything. I'll be happy to help if I can. Thank you. We'll do the best we can to make the event a success. Questions. Number 32. What will the professor do at the event? Number 33. What did the professor suggest the students do to improve their plan? Number 34. What will the students most likely do this week? Part 2b. In this part, you will hear four long passages, D, E, F, and G. Before each passage, you will hear a short description of the situation. The situation is also printed in your test booklet. Each passage will be followed by four questions. The questions are also printed in your test booklet. For each question, you will have 10 seconds to choose the best answer and mark your answer on your answer sheet. The passages and questions will be played only once. Now, let's begin. D. Situation. You will listen to a professor introducing a class on economics. Economic growth is often used as an indicator for countries. We are often told that countries in which the economy is growing are flourishing, and countries in which it isn't are heading towards ruin. But is that really the correct view? Some economists have suggested that we examine a wider range of indicators to gain a broader view. For example, what is the standard of living that people in the country have? In this class, I will talk about using quality of life as a substitute indicator for economic growth. This class is being held in this classroom today, but for the next class, the location will change, so please make sure to go to room B203 starting from next time. Also, the light from smartphones and computers can make it hard to see the screen, so use of those kinds of electronic devices is banned during class. Please make sure to put your phones and computers in your bag. There is just one more thing. The textbook for this class will be uploaded to the class website, so please print it out and bring it to class. My writings will be used as supplementary materials, so if you're interested, please take them. Questions. Number 35. What will be the main theme of this class? Number 36. What is the speaker saying about the next class? Number 37. Why is the use of electronic devices banned during class? Number 38. What did the professor say about the study materials? E. Situation. You will hear part of a lecture from an art class. Today I will talk about an artist called Paul Gauguin. Gauguin is known for being an artist who lived a very strange life. 
When he was young, he worked for a company and had a successful life. He had five children with his wife and earned a good salary. However, in his mid-thirties, he threw away that stable life and entered the art world. He lost his steady income and became separated from his wife and children. He distanced himself from the glamorous lifestyle in Europe and became fascinated by life on the island of Tahiti in the southern Pacific Ocean. He travelled there countless times and eventually moved there and remained there until he died. During his life, his paintings were not widely accepted by the world. Gauguin said that he spent most of his life in poverty. But now his works are accepted as masterpieces representative of 20th century art and many people are particularly drawn to the mystic themes of his paintings. For homework, I want everyone to research Gauguin's friendships and summarise them. He had exchanges with many other artists, such as Van Gogh. Next week, I'd like to talk more about Gauguin's life on Tahiti. Questions Number 39 what is the main topic of this passage? Number 40. What is the speaker saying about Gauguin? Number 41. What feature of Gauguin's art does the speaker say is popular? Number 42. What does the speaker want the students to do? F. Situation. You will listen to an instructor discuss visual effects in movies. Visual effects refers to the use of computers to process images. They are unique in that they are implemented after filming. Visual effects are used in a lot of what are referred to as Hollywood movies. These visual effects have many appealing features. The biggest is that the power of computers can be used to create scenes that normally would not exist. For example, if dragons and magic appear in a fantasy world, those can be created with the help of visual effects. In recent years, technology has progressed to the point where it is possible to create effects that are so natural and real that the viewer does not notice that they are effects. On the other hand, there are people who think visual effects have a bad influence on movies. They complain that movies rely on visual effects and neglect the story. Certainly, there are movies where the power of the story is damaged by an excessive focus on impressive visuals, and many famous movies from the past demonstrate that it is possible to grab the audience's hearts even without relying on visual effects. But personally, I don't think that visual effects are a bad thing. Visual effects have become an established technology and if they are used effectively, they add a lot to the movie. Today's discussion theme is what role visual effects will play in future movies. Questions Number 43 What did the speaker mention is unique about visual effects? Number 44. What did the speaker say is the biggest appeal of visual effects? Number 45. What did the speaker say will happen if filmmakers rely too much on special effects? Number 46. What did the speaker say the discussion theme is?
G. Situation. You will hear a news report about the main causes of car accidents. Next week is Road Safety Week. As part of that, information was published yesterday on the causes of automotive accidents. This information was taken from an investigation by the Road Safety Bureau, and detailed data will be posted on the website. I'd like to look at the main causes of traffic accidents based on these statistics. The most common cause of traffic accidents was distracted driving, which accounted for almost 20% of all accidents. Many car accidents are caused by people who are distracted because of using their cell phones while driving or operating their GPS. Distracted driving is thought to be particularly common among the inexperienced drivers, such as teenage drivers. The next most common cause was drunk driving. Accidents caused by drunk driving usually happen after 9 p.m., the reason being that there are many people who get dinner on their way home from work and drink alcohol with their meal. Other causes of car accidents were speeding and poor weather conditions. As you can see, most car accidents are due to an error on the driver's part. During Road Safety Week next week, an educational program to prevent accidents will be shown on television. There are also plans to place advertisements about traffic safety in newspapers. Questions. Number 47. Which organization published these statistics? Number 48. What is the speaker saying about distracted driving? Number 49. Please look at the graph. Which of the following is represented by the letter X? Number 50. What is going to be conducted during Road Safety Week?